I decided to make some more tutorials this weekend and I am going to do more and more tutorials and uh, I really love Gaia just in general making trains and I've had the opportunity to actually uh, create trains for different projects uh, including film projects uh, so it, it is something that's really amazing once you kind of figure out how to utilize it uh, you can really create some amazing assets for yourself that you could include in your projects or even for clients but the reason I'm making this other additional short video right after the one that I just completed today is because I wanted to show you guys what I uh, kind of found out that I could do and, and it's really important that I share this because this is in regards of texturing I personally find it as an artist that uh, the terrain can look amazing but if I do not have good textures, uh, and since I'm always working in Unreal Engine, in this case, not having a good landscape material, you know, for tiling and distance and all this kind of stuff that really, really complements the mesh that you've created, or let's say the train, uh, it just gets really hard for me to be able to fly over because I'm, I'm kind of noticing things that there's only so close that I can get to it. So Gaia actually has a really good option here. Let me show you guys uh, here. So if I go into my set map, uh, I have to kind of open this up. So I didn't know this. And obviously I'm just playing, playing with this every day. Uh, it's an obsession. I, I can't really stop using this uh, application. But so what I wanted to be able to do, really create a lot of information. So let me create a new set map and show you guys. So I'll, I'll create like a new one here. So watch, if I go in here now, let me pull this all up. So here, here's a brand new one that I made, not the ones that I have. And I'm going to show you guys the difference. So here, usually when I go in to work on my set map, my focus has always been up here, right? So I'm looking at the bias and, uh, you know, some of this information. But Gaia offers so much that if you even dive in further and kind of play around with things, you realize that it does have additional options. And that kind of requires these tutorials and that's the reason I thought I'll make some additional tutorials just so others can benefit from like seeing this and uh, have really the texture information much, much better, right? So Gaia already here does a pretty good job. So, I mean, there's so much to choose from, uh, which is really great. Uh, and then here you can still control it just so that's one thing that I wanted to talk about. So if I basically, let, let's say, pick this color, right? But I just want to have uh, a certain type of variation. Let's say you're working on a feature film project or TV show or even games, right? And it requires a certain type of approach in your texturing, right? Let's say you're going to texture this and they want to, maybe it's VFX and you're just creating one shot and it's only going to be used in one particular shot or a couple shots. But they, you know that the camera placement is facing a certain area where they want you to actually create something that has more of this type of information that comes from this gradient, right? But what happens is when, when I choose these, some of these are great as is, you can get great results. One, it really depends on your height map. It's obviously what the train looks like. Let's say if you have a lot of divisions like these, this would obviously look a lot better if you had more height. So let me actually see um, mountainside, mountain range, if I, Go up on my scale a little bit more. I'm just trying to find it so, that, you know, we have just a bit more height information. Okay. So hopefully this will give me uh, some more of that. But let's go back to here. And I hope that this okay, video so helps. This out Thank now. you. Uh, it takes a minute. It's normal. I mean, I'm at 2K. I recommend that you work in 1K. And once you kind of like like it, I usually just look at it from far, just then go to 2K. And, and you know, the one thing that I notice, and, and again, I'm not the expert of, of Gaia, but I am obviously studying, you know, intensively and I love doing this, but it, it helps when you're not jumping from one node to another, like click here and I want to see this and that. So once, once you bake it, that's fine. But once you get into your set maps, it slows down a little bit because it's trying to gather even more information and data, right? To all of these uh, nodes and, and spitting that out for us. So going back to now the texture info, 
here you would need to actually choose something according to the height so here you can see like if i brought this uh lower you can see what colors are affecting the top of my terrain so if you're selective when when choosing these that helps so that's the first tip and the second one is as you can see here i have some really good color variation right so i can go to none and you can see that it's spreading out even more because in my opinion and many artists out there obviously know this um especially since i worked as a matte painter in the past you know we always had to make looks you know everything look real photorealistic so i noticed that rock formations have a lot of different colorization right there's a lot of color information when you zoom in especially and you're losing that that's not as convincing because if i'm looking from far if you're working on a shop that's not going to be seen or you got a lot of like exponential fog height and fog that's fine you know and you can always use several set maps but how can we get a set map to look really good so in this case here i'll basically show you guys the difference so here uh i'm just gonna create let me actually pick one that has for this particular train i'm trying to find something that will give us a lot more color so i just want to show you that when we have this variation how can i you know get a breakup that's that's a lot better so i'm only picking this vibrant tone here just for the sake of like you know showing you guys what uh, i've seen that guy can do so here yeah it's a little too harsh great for alien scape that would be so awesome even with these bright colors or even maybe on a project like pixar or dreamworks right that would be cool because when we worked at dreamworks i had to put on a different hat and train my eye again uh, you know working with a lot of artists that um worked on stylized stuff that could also work but i'm still getting these edges so that means that i have to do some maybe tricks in unreal with my landscape material or have several set maps or combine these guys kind of like i did here one two and then the combination of them with the control of the ratio and all these blend options that you have so it's just better to do this what i'm going to show you now so here i will basically leave the set map and uh i just want to uh so 265 is what i picked on here set map and yeah, i'm just gonna bolt rock to uh, i don't know if there's a shortcut i try to copy and paste but now i'm just gonna try to try to see if i can get to that really quick so that kind of like what was my number 265 would be cool if there was like imagine if there was a search you type it in boom gets you to that color but maybe dax could um comment on this and let us know how we can quickly find that 265 it's okay it shouldn't take us too long i just really just want to be able to oh it's switching okay interesting so what i'll do uh, i'll just like select something like this so at least we have uh some sort of similarity especially a breakup as you can see like terracing kind of look right so now i'll tweak this guy and i'll leave this as is so this is the additional tip i know it took too long to get to this but it's worth it trust me so here what you want to do now you uh, you can you can go to equalize you can see that it already does an additional breakup so if i go to none you can see what happens auto levels just does it too harsh harsh we can obviously reverse it if we wanted to but in this case i'm going to go to equalize and you can see that it's already stretching that information and i from far away look at the difference i'm already getting a nice blend so here's the the trick you want to basically go to I'll just go through the stages so you can see from low medium high and then you can go to ultra and this is the most beautiful part about this program so now what i did even though when you're coming into uh unreal engine you're gonna see this type of pixelation that's one thing but if you're using a train to for a close-up you may consider watching my tutorial about like using it as meshes uh, which you know if you're just working on a vfx shot sometimes it's like i worked in vfx for like 15 years sometimes we did overkill 
I mean, you just come in and you put so many things that you're not even gonna see. And I end up modeling stuff for a lot of movies, hard surface modeling, where we basically didn't even see it and spent a lot of weeks texturing and meetings and going back and forth. So if you're just gonna have one shot, sometimes it's just great to just get the mesh out, you know, position it in there, match the lighting, do your, you know, uh, vegetation that you need on it and Houdini maybe. Uh, so I find it that it's easier. But if you look at the difference now, let's go back. I'll go to none, ultra. Now you do have an amazing breakup here and this will change. So let's, let me actually show you like when I switch it to a couple other options. I'll go to this one, for example, you can kind of see it's too harsh, but there's still a lot of like blending from color to color. If you zoom in, you can look how much color information I have. So watch what happens when I click none. It's all gone. So that's the reason what you want to make sure is when you export your uh, sat maps, your color maps, the albedos, you want to make sure that you actually do that because you can now achieve a really great variety of like color information, especially if you're using like several colors. Let me go back to ultra and then I can have this map and then let me show you some of the other ones that I did. Then I can have you know, another one that I already have, my normals, uh, some ambient occlusion, which I use this actually for like cavity uh, reasons, right? And the occlusion map is here. Uh, and then, so what this does, when I have this map now actually uh, using some of the uh, generative tools in Photoshop, you can take this texture, the set map, I have to do another tutorial for that, you can basically take this information now, run it through Photoshop, and then you can up res it using different up res. Uh, you know, there's so many apps out there. And now you're getting even more information, you know? So the only thing that I need to uh, still kind of figure out, which would be really great for a lot of artists and studios to use, is to make these meshes tileable. So I know that um, I think in World Creator, I had that option. I was able to do, I'm sure Dax already has it, maybe I don't know, or it's gonna be implemented. But if you can get these as like meshes that are uh, tileable, I mean, then like I was able to bring this into Unreal easily, just put them together and now you have an army of them. And then you can just like animate the camera and just get really, really, really good shots, right? And then you can have some of these as meshes again, not limited to height maps. Now, maybe I have a height map that's the main one, and then I can scale these guys down and just literally push them into areas where I need even more information, which I would also do as a VFX artist in Maya or Houdini, you know, that's the kind of approach that I would take. And then once you have vegetation on these things, which really gives that amazing, like convincing look to trains, right? Even if it's like dry bushes or something, uh, I think this, is what I wanted to share as far as like textures go. And then I also have this map here, uh, which which is giving me even more information. It's kind of like in substance when you're using like materials, you know, to get like cavity out. So a combination of these and then up your set maps, making sure you've set them to equalize and then ultra, you can see, look, look at the gradient here. So if I go to none, now it's all cut off but ultra gives me that really nice variety and you can, you can create some amazing stuff. I'll also be sharing some, some of these trains soon, uh, on the internet. Uh, if you, if you would like to download, uh, some stuff, I actually, if you go to, uh, gum road, I will include the, uh, link below. There's actually some that I have here that you can kind of like, uh, explore. Uh, and there's a lot of like stuff that I've tried with, uh, the earlier version of Gaia before, and uh, I already was able to get a lot of cool detail, but Gaia too is, you can't even compare it to the first one. The fact that these nodes have erosion already, and this is as is, straight out of the program. I mean, once you learn some of these functions on the right-hand side, and then if you get crazy like me and you just literally go off with your notes, right? It's very easy, just click on here, and then look through your graph. And if you name them, just double click on it and you can get a preview and also Gaia 
will zoom in to that uh, you know particular one that you're working on. Uh, again, I hope you guys like this. If you have any questions, comment below. Like, what do you think so far? I think this has a lot of potential. Uh, I know that there's a lot of interviews that you guys should check out on uh, their main website because on their website they have uh, a lot of different uh, interviews and you can you can actually see if I was to just uh, full screen this and I will go to the direct link so here there's some other information that you can see how others are actually using it in the VFX industry and there's also like a lot of showcased uh, uh, projects that they worked on but I'm sure they're gonna add a lot more tutorials and information and if you really are a technical person you can obviously have a quick understanding on what kind of things are added, how these can be utilized. And I think it's a very good tool and I hope you guys try it and uh, have fun with it. Uh, again, um, layer mixing and all this kind of stuff is something else that I'm looking into. Just because there's so much to do, I think I'm also like learning something every week. And um, I'm so glad that I'm able to share it. And hopefully you guys will uh, comment below and see what you think as far as texturing goes. And I also use some other apps. Uh, I will share that. I actually uh, used one where I was able to get the textures looking almost photorealistic. So that already helped me in Unreal get even more, you know, super like photoreal realistic uh, results with this. Have a great weekend and I'll make more tutorials. Thanks for watching, guys.